each and every point uh, each and every divided point on the circle nextly what i'll do is with radius again that same method i have to take the radius is equal to cp0 that is the distance between the center up till the point on which is there either inside the circle on the circle or on the exterior of the circle in simple cycloid it is there on the circle in superior cycloid it is there outside the circle and in this inferior cycloid it is going to be there inside the circle so what are we going to do is this c is up till here cp0 then i'll take my center as c1 cut an arc at p1 so this will become p1 as you can see in blue blue is the arc that is shown and then i'll take c2 cut an arc at p2 i'll take this point then c3 i'll cut an arc here and take up this point as p3 for 4 i'll cut an arc which is again you can see it has completed half the revolution at 4 so the arc will come as parallel to this line and then i'll cut uh, this would be a perpendicular to the directing line again and this would be point p4 point p5 point p6 point p7 uh, point p8 so now you can see that for this uh, inferior cycloid this point p never touches this directing line the initial point as well as the final point never touch the directing line so this is the difference between the three types of cycloidal curves so now what we are going to do is we are going by a simple curve by a smooth curve we are going to join all these points to have what to have my inferior cycloid okay so let's move further now what i'm going to do is the method for drawing the tangent remains the same so i'll draw my tangent how would i draw first i've taken a point q now what i'm going to do next i'm going to take this radius as cp0 that was the distance between the center of the circle and where my point lies that is my point p0 so cp0 would be my distance that i have taken and i'll cut an arc on the center line that is q1 and then again what i'll do is i'll join q q1 and then i'll draw a perpendicular from q1 to the directing line that and make it intersect at q2 but it does not reach the directing line which is the point here it is there up till this point which is the point line passing through this point p0 and parallel to the directing line so this is the point q2 which i have taken this would be the normal to the uh, normal to the curve and this would be the perpendicular line to the normal would give us the tangent now again try to recall what had happened in the when the point is on the circle this point q2 lies on the directing line when the point is outside the circle this point q2 lies outside this beyond the directing line and when the uh, p0 that is the point uh, which for which the look that should be traced is inside the circle then this q2 will be above the directing line as shown in this figure okay so this gives us the normal as well as the tangent and we have the inferior cycloid drawn so we come to the end of cycloid what all we did we constructed simple cycloid we constructed superior cycloid and then we constructed inferior cycloid and for all the three curves that we constructed we constructed the tangent as well as the normal for the curves too okay now we come to the other type of cycloid that is the epicycloid that is the second type of cycloid those inferior uh, sorry simple uh, simple cycloid inferior cycloid and a superior cycloid were different types of classification of just a cycloid which is one of the curves of the cycloidal curves cycloid epicycloid and hypocycloid are three types of cycloidal curves so now we are going to discuss the second type of curve that is epicycloid now the as, as i have shown you in the figure i'll be showing the animation again the point on the rolling circle which is rotating outside the directing circle so the what change has happened from a cycloid to epicycloid that there the a line uh, the directing whatever the curve di uh, uh, directing the uh, rolling circle was a directing line which was linear now what happened is the directing line has changed into a directing circle and the rolling circle is outside the directing circle 
and the point is again on the circle now in this condition again for epicycloid there will be simple epicycloid inferior epicycloid and superior epicycloid but we are just going to uh, we are going to construct a simple epicycloid so you are aware of the different uh, steps of constructing a cycloid or oh, sorry epicycloid so according to that you can practice your uh, superior and inferior epicycloids at uh, home and if there is any pro uh, problem you can contact us or you can contact a professor for doing the same because steps are same as I have shown you in a simple cycloid the steps won't change so let's start constructing an epicycloid here this is the animation which shows you this green is a directing curve say directing circle and this rolling circle is rolling outside uh, where it go yeah this uh, blue uh, circle is rotating outside this green directing uh, circle and the point uh, traced by the point P or say point any point which is there on the circle would be this red line as shown what there is an initial point there's a final point then again the uh, from the initial point the from the final point the next curve begins so as you can see it makes a flower kind of a thing that the red petals are the locus which are formed by the point on the circle moving on let us assume that the diameter of the rolling circle is x and the di uh, directing circle is y so what are we going to do is the first step would be to construct both the circles now let's have clear out some facts first now if I have a rolling circle and that rolling circle is moving over a directing circle now if I want to plot the locus for one ro uh, rotation or say one roll of the uh, rolling circle now what would be it from the initial point when that point P starts ro uh, when the circle starts rolling the point P would move away from the directing circle and then there would be a point when it comes and meets it again so at that point what will happen is that it will complete one ro rotation of the circle and on the directing circle the arc that would be covered would be the arc length would be covered would be pi x why pi x because the circumference of the rolling circle is pi into x so the arc length would be pi x so what would be the angle that would be covered would be given by this formula that is theta is equal to x by y into 300 uh, 3 uh, 3600 which will give you the actual angle of the uh, 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 sorry the sector uh, which the arc will be at now first of all mark the center as o then take y as the radius and what draw a angle uh, sorry draw an arc or draw a sector which is having an arc of angle theta and then with radius equal to x and uh, the center again as c we will draw what we will draw a circle which is the rolling circle let's see slowly and steadily this is a point c a point o at the bottom of the circle which is a center for what which is the center for the uh, directing circle and then now v uh, sorry y is the radius of it so now I've uh, constructed these two lines which are the uh, which are the uh, angle theta now theta can be derived by that formula x by y into three three six double zero so this point would be the initial uh, sorry this point would be either initial or final point or uh, this point would be the either initial or final point I've taken this as the initial point P and this as this as the center and then I have plotted a circle which is my generating or my rolling circle and this would be my what this would be my directing line which we which we have okay so now I have my directing circle and I have my directing uh, rolling circle I have my point P for which if I trace the locus I will have what I will have my epicycloid so what is my next step my next step is to divide the rolling circle into eight parts and name them one two three four five six seven and eight now what I'll do after that is with OS center and radius e equal to uh, the uh, OC that is the distance between the center of the directing circle up to the distance of the rolling circle so with that I will draw a curve that is passing through C and again divide that curve into eight parts 
Now, this is sa same as what we did for uh, the simple cycloid or say superior in, in, uh, superior or inferior cycloid. We had we drew a straight line that which was passing through the center of the rolling circle. Why a straight line? Because that straight line was parallel to the directing circle. Here also we are drawing a curve which is actually parallel to the directing curve, which is a circle in this case. So that's why we have taken the radius as O to C and then we have constructed a curve and divided into 8 equal parts. First I'll divide the circle that is a rolling circle into 8 equal parts that is 1, 2, 3, 4 as you can see they are appearing on uh, your screen, they are flashing on your screen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Then what I did is my center is C, the radius is C to what O, oh, oh, sorry my center is O and uh, this is C, uh, there is a mistake again sorry. Uh, so this is the uh, radius and this is center I've drawn a curve and then I've divided this into what into eight equal parts How would I know key what length I'm going to take is I can I can know the circumference of the circle and I can divide it into eight equal parts So I can know okay how uh, long would be my uh, one one segment so I can divide it into that way now next what I'm going to do is with the radius equal to O1 and O as center I am going to draw an arc parallel to the directing circles from all the points. Just as we draw parallel lines from all the points on the circle, uh, uh, parallel lines to the directing line, all the points on the circle in a cycloid, here we are going to draw parallel curves because it is not a straight line, it is a curve. So we are going to put O as center and then take distance as any point on the circle which is we have divided either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then draw a curve which is parallel, which obviously would be parallel to the directing curve. As you can see here. These blue lines are different uh, 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 curves which are parallel to the directing curve and which are passing through these points. So this is the thing that we have done. Now next what we are going to do is, now again the same old procedure we are going to follow. What we are going to take the radius as CP and this uh, here C to P and then we are going to take center as C1 then cut an arc on line pa uh, the curve passing through 1 then 2, 3, 3. Let's see. Radius equal to CP and center is equal to C1 cut an arc on cut an arc on the curve passing through 1 at P1 do the same thing for C2, C3 and uh, 8 or say repeat it for the same point on the circle as we'll do what we'll do is CP as radius C1 as center cut an arc where cut an arc here then next would be to cut an arc at P3 cut an arc at P4 this is from 3 with center as 4 we are going to see here again at 4 it has completed its one uh, rotation uh, half of the rotation so it has again come up perpendicular line so you can say that it is a normal it is a normal to the curve uh, which is going to be there at the center if you if I construct this line this would be a normal and if I construct a line which is perpendicular to it it would be the tangent so now for 5 I have this uh, radius as C, C5P6 then for 6 I have uh, this C6P7 for P8 I have this so I have all the points that I require then if I pass a normal curve which is passing through all these points I will have what I will have my uh, epicycloid let's see epicycloid as you can see now we have come to the end of this session in the coming session we are going to discuss what we are going to discuss hypocycloids then there are involutes to dis uh, discuss then there are spirals to discover uh, d construct and then we will take up a few examples a few examples how it is the it are there in the uh, exam for the previous curves that we have constructed so be with us we will be back in say about 10 minutes so thank you